The Concept of the Trinity All three religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, claim that they are monotheistic, meaning they believe and worship only one supreme God, the creator and sustainer of the universe and everything it contains. Whereas this is the case for Islam and Judaism, Christianity has strayed from the concept of monotheism of worshipping one god in favor of a form of polytheism with a vague doctrine that was innovated after the departure of Jesus Christ three and a half centuries later, sparking controversy within and without the Christian religion. Christians say God is a triune Godhead, comprising three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in one divine being. They say they are not three gods, instead they are one god, all co-eternal and co-equal. If you ask ten different Christians to define the essence of God, you will get ten different answers. It is very problematic that Christians face a challenge in explaining the essence of God, especially when the Bible states, for God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. This is not the case in Islam. The whole concept of the Trinity makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Christians believe that God is the Father and His own Son, but how can one be the Father of Himself? How is that logical? If God had a child, the oneness of God would no longer stand. God is far from needing a wife or child, or taking the form of an imperfect human body. Only one explicit verse in the Bible references the Trinity. It is found in the King James Version. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. This verse was expunged from the Bible by Christian scholars, historians, and Bible revisers, since it was proven to be a fabrication. It was something added later by the Pauline Roman Catholic Church, which was never part of the original Greek manuscripts. This verse is not found in the newer Bible publications, such as the Revised Standard Version and the New Revised Standard Version, because the verse is proven to be fabricated. Why are there Christian preachers still reading the King James Version when it has been proven by Christian scholars to contain fabricated verses? How can Christians trust the Bible to be the Word of God if one Bible has the verse and the other does not? How can Christians take the Bible to be the Word of God if verses are added to and expunged from it? Would God, the Almighty, allow His Book of Guidance for Humanity to contain fabricated verses? The Holy Quran exists today in the exact form it was sent down in from the heavens 1400 plus years ago, because it is the actual Word of God, and not a single word can and will be added to or subtracted from it, because God, the Almighty, would not allow it. The Holy Quran is the book of guidance to all humanity until the last day. The concept of the Trinity was innovated three and a half centuries after the departure of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the disciples, and even Paul, who formulated the innovative idea that Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God, were all unaware of and had never heard of the concept of the Trinity. This fact is recognized today by many Christian scholars and can be found in many of their prominent books and references. Unfortunately, many well-intentioned Christians blindly follow their church like sheep. When Christians reference the Trinity, they quote from the New Testament and not the Old Testament because nowhere does the Old Testament even hint at the concept of the Trinity. Why doesn't the Old Testament say anything about the Trinity if it is the fundamental concept in Christianity? Did God not see fit to mention this critical fact to the Jews? 
why didn't the prophet Moses, nor Jesus, peace be upon them, teach and preach the Trinity during their time if it was a necessary condition? What happens to the prophets and righteous people who lived before Jesus Christ? Since they had never heard of the Trinity, what will their outlook be on Judgment Day? Will they not make it to paradise simply because they were born before Jesus Christ? Did God suddenly change who he is and his message to humanity? The Old Testament repeatedly states that there is only one God and no one else should be worshipped. The Old Testament states, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. The New Testament also quotes Jesus Christ's teaching and preaching. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Luke chapter 4, verse 8 states, Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Three never equals one, no matter how hard Christians try to justify such a blasphemous claim about God. The Holy Quran came down as humanity's final book with the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It confirms the oneness of God and mentions it throughout, as did all previous revelations and prophets of God. Your God is one God. So whoever would hope for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous work and not associate in the worship of his Lord anyone. Quran chapter 18 verse 110. And your Allah is one Allah. There is no God but he, most gracious, most merciful. Quran chapter 2 verse 163. The concept of the Trinity is firmly rejected in Islam and the Holy Quran. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah, and his word which he directed to Mary, and a soul created at a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and do not say three. Desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. Quran chapter 4 verse 171 God makes it clear in the Holy Quran that the act of ascribing a son to him angers him. Ascribing a son to God is beneath the Almighty. And they say, the most beneficent Allah has begotten a son, or offspring, or children. Indeed, you have brought forth, said, a terrible, evil thing, whereby the heavens are almost torn, and the earth is split asunder, and the mountains fall in ruins. That they ascribe a son, or offspring, or children to the most beneficent Allah. But it is not suitable for the majesty of the most beneficent that he should beget a son. Quran chapter 19 verses 88 to 92. According to the Holy Quran, the one that calls God part of the Trinity is a disbeliever who will face a painful punishment. The Quran states, They have certainly disbelieved who say, Allah is the third of three. And there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, there will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. Quran chapter 5 verse 73. The Quran then says, The Messiah, son of Mary, was not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed on before him, and his mother was a supporter of truth. They both used to eat food. Look how we make clear to them the signs. Then look at how they are deluded. Quran chapter 5 verse 75. 
While the Holy Quran does not explicitly discuss the modern-day trinity components of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together as Christians convey the concept today, the Holy Quran condemns both Trinitarianism and the wrongful worship of Jesus Christ and his mother Mary. Christians' beliefs about Jesus Christ's divinity and sonship have changed as their beliefs evolved. When the Holy Quran was revealed, some took Mary as a deity, and some would call her Mother of God.